Hey guys, do you remember that Dunkin' Donuts commercial? Time to make the donuts! Okay, well that's what I just did, and that's what you can do too on this how to eat for $20 a week Italian food based menu. And these are basically for breakfast along with some black coffee, like having two or three each morning. If you would like to make these along with a ton of pizza and pasta to eat all week, please stay tuned to the rest of the video. Enjoy! A quick thank you to all my PayPal and Cash App contributors for making my videos possible. Okay guys, let's start our grocery adventure at Kroger and see what we can find with just pantry items on hand and $20 to spare to eat all week. What can we find? So let's start in the produce section. And my goal, as always, is to get fresh produce when I can. And what would an Italian food menu be without some tomato? So I actually get quite a bit. I get two pounds of these tomatoes on the vine. And at only 99 cents a pound, it was, it was a priority of mine. Now you will see later in the video, I actually get these by some kind of fluke for cheaper. And here we are, almost two pounds on the dot of fresh tomatoes. Now you will see here, spinach at $1.49 a pound. My original goal was to get basil, you know, to have some nice green in the menu, in the dishes. And unfortunately those were too expensive, but I got between half a pound and two thirds of a pound of that spinach for a very cheap. Compare that to this organic basil at reduced at 99 cents for half an ounce. That was out of the question, and as a matter of fact, there was not even any conventional basil for cheaper, you know, around that price. So spinach it was. All right, I have red onion here at 99 cents a pound, so I'm going to take one, um, you know, medium to large size onion. Here I get one, it's probably about 60 cents. You'll see that on the receipt, and I just, I love red onion so much, so I thought that would go good with the menu. All right, here we are in the baking section, and I am picking up this bag of whole wheat flour for $2.99. Now, it's not on sale or anything, but it's generic, and it's a great price. And it's very important during a week where I will be cooking from scratch to save money. There's usually a trade-off of either time or money, and that is true here, too. All right, next up in the baking section as well is Fast Rise yeast and here I find it for a uh, generic for $2.99 for a jar now look at that versus $5.69 for the brand name and I know sometimes you know the generic is gone you can only get the brand name but uh, that wasn't the case here all right now I'm in the tomato product section and I'm not really going to get this uh, I'm not going to focus on tomato products too much because I have the fresh tomatoes but for the price of 59 cents for six ounces of tomato paste, I thought it was important to add that in because it just will add a lot of flavor throughout the week. All right, here I am in another aisle looking for another product that you might find a little bit unconventional during an Italian style week. And that is a can of Chunk Light tuna for 79 cents I wanted to add this for a boost of protein as well as very specifically for a recipe that I enjoy making. Now here's an, an item you're more likely to expect to see and that is a bag of sliced pepperoni which will go quite far in this menu and it's $2.50 for a six ounce bag. Now an item here in the dairy section that I'm very happy to get is a 15 ounce tub of ricotta cheese. And I say I'm happy to get it because ricotta cheese is very versatile as you will see later in my videos. And the price for the 15 ounce container is $2.29, great price. So here's a shot of the food I get except for one last item, which is a bag of shredded mozzarella cheese, one pound for $3.99. 
Okay guys, you are about to see my receipt for $18.61. Now you will see that it otherwise would have come to about $19.60, except for the tomatoes that were supposed to be 99 cents a pound. I actually got two pounds of tomatoes for 99 cents, but I left the receipt as is for demonstration purposes, just to show you, normally this would come to close to $20 for everything I bought. This recipe made 16, but now we have 12 left between my husband and I eating two each. Mmm. Look at that sweet ricotta cheese filling. Mmm-hmm. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. This recipe I am going to make right now is going to be the dough for the pizza as well as those breakfast donuts that I was talking about. So it's going to be the same dough, but it's going to be separated at the end for different purposes. I kind of like this recipe because it's multi-purpose. And on a week when you're cooking from scratch a lot, it is highly important to be able to save time when you can. Here we have five cups of whole wheat flour. Next, we need four and a half teaspoons of yeast. Now, I included the yeast in the budget price at the grocery store because um, a lot of people have been having a harder time during, the pa during this pandemic finding yeast and they don't have it on their shelf so I figured a lot of people would have to buy it new. And that's about four and a half. One and a half teaspoons of salt. Just mix those dry ingredients together. Next, slowly pour in two cups of water. That's between about 120 and 130 degrees. I have one of these thermometers. All right, so let's get this water in here. Mix that a little bit. Make a little bit of a smoother dough. All right, here we go. Quarter cup of oil. Mix that in. So you might have something like this to begin with before you start kneading. And then just get your hands in there. Well, that's nice and warm. So keep kneading for a couple minutes until you have everything integrated. And then, we're going to let it rise. Okay guys, here is my kneaded dough ball that's going to be used for the two recipes. So now what I'm going to do is take this lid right here that I have. What I do is I rinse it off in hot water and I let, I let the lid come to a little bit of a higher temperature when I rinse it with the hot water. And then there's a couple of drops of water on it on the inside and then I just cover the bowl with the hot lid back in 20 minutes. All right, now while you are waiting for your dough to rise, we are going to work on the filling for the donuts for breakfast. And for that, you're just going to need powdered sugar from your pantry, and ricotta cheese that was in this grocery food budget. What we're going to do is take half a pound, because this is a, like a one pound container, so half of this container of ricotta cheese, and we're going to put it on this plate right here. So I'm just slicing that in half, and I'm just gonna scoop it out very easily. So you don't have to fill the donuts, but it helps make a breakfast feel like you got a little more something in it when you've got your donuts filled, okay? And then we're going to work the powdered sugar on top of it. This is super easy, this part. So in total, it'll be about a quarter cup of powdered sugar. Okay, so there you go. You have it all mixed in. So just put your ricotta sugar mixture to the side and get out a 
uh, pan that you can fill with some oil with a couple of inches of oil for frying your donuts or if you have a fryer whatever you use just put that here on the stove and get some oil out that you're going to use for frying now I've got peanut oil in here and I haven't done any deep frying in a while so I'm going to use some fresh oil now I know some households have a couple of different kinds of oils lined up you know there's, there's Crisco some people have the Crisco and then they have oil that they use for like frying chicken and frying seafood and then the other oils you use whatever oil you want to use I know when um, I visited some uh, relatives houses when I was younger they used the same cooking oil for everything so sometimes your donuts would, would have a little bit of hint of the fried chicken in it but that's okay it doesn't matter whatever works for you all right so uh, I'm just going to get a little bit of oil in this pan and this oil is going to get reused because oil is expensive it's not it's not throw away that easily for me all right I'm just going to put the frying oil sort of like between low and medium for now just you know just to warm it up a little and we are going to get our dough out here reveal our dough which <gasps> surprise has gotten nice and puffy okay so we are going to separate this dough in half and then work on putting our donuts together so I gotta find my dough blade. Where did I put my dough blade? I can't keep track of anything, guys. Let's separate this dough down the middle. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just like this. And then we're going to separate that into two for our one part for pizza dough, one part for breakfast donuts. Okay, so let's put this here and just recover our pizza dough with this lid and put it to the side. Okay, now you see we have this dough here. So um, we're going to separate this, slice this dough apart a number of times. So let's start once down the middle do this one two times you got four there four here break this down into 16 pieces it makes it easier to work with in each individual piece of dough when you do that Okay, so you see we have 16 pieces. They're not all evenly sized, but that's okay. That's rustic style cooking, you know, homemade, where everything is not made by a machine or industrialized. We're going to fill these with some ricotta before we put them in the oil. So we can turn our heat, our oil up to medium. So let's get these each into like a ball. Just flatten it out. You see we got the three flattened discs here. You're going to turn that oil all the way up, okay? Put like about maybe a half a teaspoon worth in the middle of each donut round, like that. That's about the right amount, and the reason why you're not putting more there. I know a lot of you would want to put more, but the reason why is because you have to make sure that the dough is going to completely surround the cheese, you know, and nothing is going to leak out when you're frying. So you gotta be able to close these. So take each one and close it up sort of like a fan, like this. Okay, pinch it like that. That's really the easiest way to do it. 
got to keep an eye on your oil too. You got this multi multitasking to do a little bit. Okay, just seal it up. See, because the dough is still moist, you can pinch these without having to use extra water or anything to seal them off. Okay, guys, let's use our pasta tool here to drop one of our donuts into the oil. Are we ready? Okay, we're going to do these three at a time. We're going to fry those for about three minutes. And I'm just going to turn them over like once during that process. Just turn those over. Carefully. All right, let's get these out. And onto the paper towel. See, these puff up when they get deep fried, they puff up, you know, pretty large. Okay, be very generous with the powdered sugar on these. Put some sugar on the other side. Those look wonderful. Okay guys, we have breakfast donuts frying in the background and I'm going to eat one of these right in front of the camera. Let's hope I don't burn myself. Mmm, that is so good. That's wonderful. Got some of that hot sweet cheese in there. You've got to try this, guys. You've got to try it. Just have a couple of these Italian style donuts with some black coffee, you know, with the coffee from the pantry, and you have your breakfast set each morning. Time to make the pizza! <laughs> well today guys, I am going to be making this uh, dough here. It's the other half of the dough that I prepared. And it's going to go on this 16 inch pie pan as well as this nine inch tart pan. So I'm making two pizzas today, all right? And they're going to be thin crust. This pan's going to have two different types of pizza and this pan's going to have one type. So let's get started. All right, I just put a little bit of oil in each of these pans, a little bit of peanut oil for the bottom of the crust to get that oil all over. And then these pans are going to be put aside and I'm going to roll out that dough. Now it's time to roll out the dough. This is the stuff that's hard for me to do because I don't have that upper body strength and this is an activity that separates the women from the girls. So we'll see if I pass muster today. Just throw him on the counter there. Need a little bit. Now since I have two different size pieces that I'm making, I am going to cut this into two pieces with my dough blade. I'm just going to approximate basically right here. This will be for the small pie and this will be for the large pie. Just keep rolling him out till he's the right size to fit inside that tart pan. All right, I am going to go ahead and put the toppings and everything on this pizza before I move on to the larger pizza pan. So this pizza is gonna be a little bit unique, so you'll see if you like it or not. Okay guys, this is going to be a tuna melt pizza. 
I know that might sound a little bit funny, but it is delicious. If you like tuna melts, you really love this. So let's start by putting a little bit of mozzarella on this pizza. This is basically going to be a white pie, so you're not going to see any red sauce in there or anything. All right, uh, the next thing you're going to do is crush up a can of tuna so that the chunks are out of there. Make sure it's drained. The cats conned me out of the tuna juice from this can. You know, they ignore me all day, but as soon as they hear the tuna can crack, oh boy, they're my, they're my best buddy. My best buddy. Go ahead and use your hands, okay, to place the tuna on. I actually still have half a can of tuna left, which I am going to save probably for a dish with pasta. The next step is adding some red onion on here. Some people like to chop up the onion. I like sometimes to have these in like full rings like this. Just move that one in the middle like that. Get a little more onion on here. All right, so, so if you remember, we got a lot of this spinach and I don't waste these spinach stems. A lot of people throw them away, but I use them. So I am going to snip some of the ends off of the spinach and drop it onto this pie. All right, we have our tuna, red onion, and spinach, and mozzarella on there. So let's just put on just a little bit of herbs and spices before we stick it in the oven. I've got some garlic powder, Italian seasoning, black pepper. All right, this is going to go into the oven at 425 degrees for 14 minutes. Okay guys, the first pizza is done. And this looks so delicious. Let me see if I can get this closer to the camera for you without burning my fingers since this uh, ceramic tends to hold the heat quite a bit. Oh my God, I, I just cannot wait to eat this. It's a little too hot for me right now. But um, this tuna melt pizza is one of my favorite pizzas. And it's, it's pretty affordable because of the tuna, I mean, you're using the stems of the spinach, which was also low cost. Onion is not expensive. The bag of flour was not expensive. Really the biggest investment in a week like this, in a grocery budget like this, is your time. Because when you're making things from scratch, you're spending more time. I will taste this a little bit later after it cools down. Now, let's roll out the dough for our second pie. Just with the other one, like that one, this is going to be a thin crust. Nice thin crust. and. Half of the pie is going to be one flavor, and the other half is going to be another flavor. Now, I am not really good at rolling out a perfectly round pizza dough. So what I do is I just get it onto the pan, and I form, you know, the round curves where I need to, like if I have to use extra dough and just press it in. That's what I do. All right, friends, remember the can of tomato paste that we bought in this challenge? Okay, we're gonna put that into a bowl and then add twice the amount of water. So I'm gonna have a ratio of water to tomato paste, two to one. And for this half, we are going to have the traditional American favorite it's going to be tomato sauce with cheese and pepperoni. Okay, let's get a little bit more red sauce on this. Okay, 
So as you can see, you still have a lot of tomato sauce left for other pizzas and other pasta dishes if you, you know, follow this grocery menu. All right, now we're going to top this side of the pizza with some mozzarella. If you notice, I'm not taking on tons of ingredients because this is not meant to be like a restaurant style all you can eat type. This is something that's like meant to be a, you know, a little bit healthy, right? And meant to last. You want your ingredients to last a little bit. Still have a good amount of mozzarella left. Now we're going to put some pepperoni on. Let's just put one more here. Okay, that is going to complete this side. We'll put some herbs on when we're done with these main toppings. Okay, so let's switch to the other side. This side of the pizza, this half, is going to be ricotta cheese spread on the bottom of the pie. Let's start there. That's another good thing about this cheese. It is highly spreadable. Okay, you still have a little more than a fourth of this container of ricotta cheese left. It used approximately a fourth to cover this bottom, so you'll even still have more of this left for another pasta or pizza dish. We're going to top the ricotta cheese with tomatoes. Let's just do about a cap full of olive oil, like this. Let's put just a little bit of salt on this side, just a little, because, you know, the ricotta and tomato, you know, neither of those have any kind of like salt or anything in them. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of crushed red pepper. Actually, I'll do that to this side too. And some Italian seasoning. I'm going to put this on both sides. Finally, just a little bit of garlic powder on the pepperoni side. Doesn't this look wonderful? Hey, you could do this every day if you want, if you have just a little bit of time. Okay, so this is going to go into the oven, 425 degrees for 14 minutes. Okay guys, it looks like our pizza has pretty much settled down from the high heat of the oven and this looks just absolutely delicious. You got two different kinds of pizzas, two different kinds of cheese and um, I'm really excited actually to taste this one over here. And of course we have our tuna pizza as well. So I'm going to cut into these and give each of them a taste. Alright, these are the three types of pizzas that I made and I'm going to taste each one here with you. First, I'm going to taste my um, tuna pizza here, my tuna melt pizza. Mm. If you like tuna guys, you're really going to like that. That flavor really comes out. Here is my homemade pepperoni. Some of the pepperoni escaped to the 
back end there during baking. That's really good. Now, I didn't sweeten the tomato paste, and if you notice, um, in commercial tomato sauces and in restaurant pizzas that you get, tomato sauce is generally sweetened. So if you make this recipe and did it the way I did it, you'll notice that the tomato paste or tomato sauce is not sweet. But that is good with me. Now this, this I know I'm really going to love. I love the ricotta cheese, as I said before. Here we go, guys. Mmm. You know, tasting these three side by side, I think the ricotta one is actually my favorite. There's something really refreshing about it, but really they are all very good. I am going to go eat this. I don't even know if I'll be able to finish all of it. So what we're going to need is four cups of whole wheat flour, which I have pre-measured. Now, uh, the next thing is a quarter cup of oil. You can use any kind of oil. I tend to use oil with whole wheat recipes when I'm using exclusively whole wheat because I think whole wheat maybe it's like a little bit grittier and the oil makes it a little smoother. So here we go. I'm pouring the oil. I'm adding one and a half cups of water into this. That's all the ingredients you need to make the pasta and mix all of this together. So there you go. That is what the dough looks like right now. And then, now I'm going to get in there with my hands. Okay, I am finished kneading my dough ball here. So now what I'm going to do is roll it out. And I do have a cutting board right here, but for now, what I'm going to do is roll the dough out on my stove. It's a non-porous surface. I can also use my counter, but my camera view is here on my stove. My stove is clean. What I find is that I waste less flour by rolling the dough out on a non-porous surface. You can start out by flattening it with your hands. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a little trick right here that I have for uh, making my stretch, my dough stretch more with very little work, and that's just taking the dough, just like peeling it up, and see it stretches as you peel it up, so it's actually getting flatter when you do that. Just got to do a little carefully. There we go. Like that. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to prepare about one fourth of the dough into pasta shapes and boil it, and we're going to we're going to prepare the dish so that you see how it turns out. Let's say this is about one-fourth, this quadrant right here. So we're just going to move this other dough out of the way. All right, so let's get this piece of dough here. Let's start cutting this. Just cut lengthwise along this right here, side to side. And then this way, up and down. You know, when you peel them up, they get longer, so there we go. That's a pasta noodle. It creates the line. You just keep doing that in your desired size and shape. And then you'll find when you peel them up, they'll get a little bit longer. Right, they'll get a little bit longer from pulling them up. And you'll eventually have all of these noodles here. Now I've got the water boiling, so I'm going to get the pasta in there. Put them 
in there and they boil for a couple of minutes or basically just until they rise to the top of the water. My pasta noodles all rose to the top, all right, and then I turned them off from uh, the boil. They are settled down. I don't even drain the pasta really. I just lift it up. I don't use a strainer basically. Just let it drip a little bit and then move it to the plate. So let's get one of these nice plump red tomatoes chopped up and some of these spinach leaves and get them on top of the pasta with our toppings. So this is just like so beautiful, so colorful, right? Now you could put some of the fresh ricotta cheese on top, like a couple of you know spoonfuls on the top or you could put some of the pepperoni on top too um, because there's a number of ingredients in this budget and you know you have those options but I'm going to wait to use those for now just put on a little bit of olive oil you know just like that okay and then a little bit of vinegar. I have red wine vinegar in my pantry. I'm going to use that. You can use any kind of vinegar you want. I think white, white vinegar, I think white vinegar or red wine vinegar is the best for this recipe. And then I've got a little bit of salt. There was no salt in the noodle recipe, so I put a little bit of salt on top. And some pepper and Italian seasoning. So these um, items, the herbs and spices and olive oil and vinegar are the pantry items. And you can see here, this is, you know, very tempting. This, this is very filling. I would say even for, you know, a big manly appetite, uh, or if you're just very hungry, you could eat this whole serving. You would be full. I mean, it's whole wheat pasta and vegetables, very filling. I am going to go eat this. I don't even know if I'll be able to finish all of it. Hope you don't mind, guys. I'm still eating, and my kitchen is messier than ever. You can say some of these foods are Italian, Italian-American, Italian, Italian style. Some of them are my concoctions, and you can really customize um, these ingredients to what you want to do with them, and uh, there are no limitations when you use your imagination. So anyway, please let me know in the comments which of these dishes that I made, even including the donuts, the pasta, the pizzas, what one would, do you think would be your favorite? And what, if any changes, would you make to any of the dishes? Okay guys, thank you and see you in the comments.